So I was working as a crewman on this lobster fishing boat, going out, spending 10, 12 hours a day at sea, catching lobsters. And I became very impressed with how much knowledge about lobsters the fishermen had. They really knew a lot about these animals. They were down there underwater, uh, and the fishermen had in their head this whole map of the seafloor and where the lobsters were going and all this stuff. And every time they'd pull up a trap, now granted they were catching these lobsters and selling them for food, but they were also uh, very keen observers of the biology of the lobster, the seasonal cycles, and every trap that came up was sort of a, was sort of a, a little capsule, you know, uh, full of data. And, and the fishermen were, were watching all this and taking note of it all and very tuned in to what was going on with the lobster population. And one day we were out on the boat and uh, a scientist came up in another boat and they started chatting and that's when I realized the scientists and the fishermen were collaborating because the scientists wanted to know what the fishermen knew. So that's how I got interested in lobster science, by being a fisherman. I got interested in the sex life of lobsters because I saw that the fishermen were protecting these large female lobsters. They would mark them and throw them back. And those females would come up over and over again covered in all of these eggs. And that was part of their conservation strategy. So I started talking to scientists who were studying this, and I realized, well, something is producing all those eggs. <laughs> and that was the sex life of the lobster underwater. And I found some researchers who were studying uh, the sex life of lobsters in tanks, in their labs and everything. And I was just stunned at what a soap opera it was. <laughs> and it was just hilarious. Uh, so I ended up writing all about that, and that became a big part of the story, the, the, the romantic side of lobster life, which I hadn't even, you know, thought would have existed to that degree. I think food is a, is a good tool to get people aware of marine conservation um, if you can get their attention about it, because food is in front of us all the time. And I think more and more consumers are beginning to take note of the seafood they're eating and they're concerned about the sustainability of it. So that's a growing trend. So if we can piggy, piggyback on that trend and use food as a way to get people interested in biology, um, and learning about these creatures they're eating, uh, then hopefully they'll have a stronger awareness about sustainability issues and conservation as well. I think this is a tough, tough issue with seafood in the future. Um, I think on the one hand, we're going to have to find ways to do aquaculture in a sustainable manner. And that's still a big challenge. At the same time, I think we're also going to have to get used to thinking of of fish and seafood as a very, very special thing to eat, a great treat, you know. I mean, we, the age of, of, of cheap fish sticks is over. We're gonna have to be willing to, to pay more for a high quality piece of seafood. But I'm also excited that we could feel good about that in that we might also be able to support a sustainable small scale fishery, for example. I would like to see people take this whole trend that's happening now of more awareness about their food and not just make it into, oh, I'm aware of um, the issue of sustainability, but to actually figure out ways for them to connect with the people who are doing the harvesting um, so that you know when you're eating such and such a fish for dinner, you know what fishery that comes from. You may even be able to go on the web and see the fishermen who caught your fish. I would like to be able to see us be able to, to track, you know, backtrack from our food to actually maybe even the person who caught it. To me, that would be a great innovation in our awareness. On the one hand, you want people to see the fish and how beautiful they are and just kind of ooh and ah, right? You know, and there's an aesthetic delight in that, which is, which is nice. And, and maybe that'll encourage people, some people, to want to learn more about the oceans and stuff and get a broader perspective that way. But, you know, I do think that to be able to actually integrate educational messages into, you know, the viewing of the creatures is, is pretty important. And um, so I think the more that aquariums can do that kind of thing, the better.